June 2020. Hands up! Hands up! Whose streets? Days after the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Demonstrations in Seattle turned violent. With police on the receiving end of bricks, bottles, and rocks. Just dropped a bunch of pepper spray right point blank. Yeah. And protesters repeatedly tear gassed. Try not to rub your eyes, okay? Days later, as demonstrators close in on Capitol Hill, declaring it an occupied zone, police vacate the East Precinct. Former President Donald Trump declares Seattle an anarchist jurisdiction, threatening to bring in the National Guard, tweeting, Take back your city now. If you don't do it, I will. Mayor Durkin responds, telling the president to go back to his bunker. And that, she says, was just the beginning. Trump just kept pouring gasoline on it, and it had a real impact. With every Trump tweet, her inbox, phone messages, and social media exploded. It not only polarized the situation, it brought people to the fight. And leading some of those people straight to Mayor Durkin's home. Seattle City Council member Shama Sawan. And what did they leave behind? Homophobic and misogynistic graffiti spray painted at her gate. Did she know what she was doing? She, you know, she absolutely knew what she was doing. As a former federal prosecutor, Durkin's home address had been confidential for years. Protecting her and her family from the dangerous criminals she's put behind bars. She did it knowing the harm it could be done. Go to the field, me and Jenny Durkin's neighborhood. That single act, Durkin says, changed her life. It made it so much more literally dangerous for a family because before you could take some comfort in the people who were threatened to kill you didn't know where you were. Durkin knows firsthand it is a matter of life and death. I was good friends with Tom Wales. A U.S. prosecuting attorney, Tom Wales was murdered in 2001 in his Queen Anne home, a case that remains unsolved. It's a fear that's based in too much experience and reality to know that I got to take it very seriously. But the repeated marches on her home made things worse. This was at a whole new level. Coinciding with a dramatic rise in hate speech, death threats, and malicious and vile emails. Just last month from Jeff, wishing you and your freak show family nothing but the worst, praying they are all assaulted by the hordes of vagrants you have unleashed on the street. And a day later, this graphic and threatening message from Jason. No longer can you just disagree with someone. You have to villainize them, you have to destroy them, they have to be the enemy. At least a dozen death threats went to the Seattle Police Department and the FBI, including this phone message. I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to kill your whole family. Do you understand me? The man behind this call pleaded guilty, went through the King County Mental Health Court, and is eligible for treatment. But many of the threats are anonymous, targeting not just Durkin, but her partner and her children. There were times when we couldn't have our son come home because it wasn't safe and we made a decision to, to move him from the house. A restraining order and two arrests have so far kept Durkin and her family safe, but the threats keep coming. There's this normalization of really dehumanizing people. And I think that that's really uh, a dangerous thing for us. She blames the growing extremism we're seeing in politics. And unless that changes, Durkin says, we are all going to pay the price. We can't continue and survive as a democracy if that is what happens, because good people won't want to serve. What did the city council do about the violation of her privacy? Nothing. And Durkin says, that's not only wrong, it's dangerous. Both elected officials and the public should have some really bright lines. Some things just aren't okay. It's not okay to go to someone's house and spray paint graffiti or to have death threats, and everybody should denounce it. Because when they don't, real people are left to deal with the consequences. Are you still afraid? I take this, the threats to my security seriously, and I, I fear for my family. You know, I, that's as a mom, you want to make sure that they're all right and they're protected. What about your partner and your children? Are they afraid? They have a very different sense of security now they don't feel safe. So were those threats, so many of them, a factor in her decision not to run for re-election? Yes, 
absolutely a factor. But she also says she strongly believes that stepping away was the right decision for the city of Seattle. I can only imagine over the last few years, so many things she'd rather forget, but yeah. obviously she'd like to be remembered for something. What is it? Yeah. In her own words, her term has been brutal, right? Uh, she believes history, though, is going to say that Seattle got it right when it comes to COVID, that what we did in the city was a model for the nation, so she'd like to be remembered for that. Also, Seattle Promise, her free college tuition program, has more than 1,000 students enrolled, 30% first in their families to go to college, and of course, Climate Pledge Arena, home of the Kraken. And hopefully, she says, the future Seattle Sonics.